tonight on Newsfeed. A suspect is arrested on the shooting on North Campus and a new addition to Ann Arbor. Plus, the university is relying less on government spending and a controversy over teen driving. All this and more on Ann Arbor's only local newscast, Newsfeed, starts now. Welcome to Newsfeed. I'm Kelly Smock. And I'm Shannon Kantner. Today is Monday, January 28th, 2008. A lot of eights there. And that means it's almost February. So let's get right into our campus news of the night. The University of Michigan is relying less on government funding for research these days. The university reported a drop in the federal funding for this year. Also, there has been a decrease in governmental organization support as well. Many believe this money shortage is due to a cut in research budget budgets for these organizations as well. Researchers do not need to worry, though. The university is now relying on private donors to support the research funds. The University of Michigan is eighth in the nation, for endowments, that is. A 2007 study found that the university's rate of return was higher than any other school that ranked in the top ten list. People have begun to question how such funds are being distributed. Many have questioned why tuition cost has not been decreased in response to the success of endowments. The reason? Universities usually only spend 5% of their investment returns, while the rest is invested to prevent inflation. Also, most donors often ask that their contributions be spent in specific areas. Former University President James Duderstadt said, quote, The state of Michigan needs and deserves a university much better than it is willing to pay for. Hence, the University of Michigan must turn to its alumni and friends to provide support no longer provided by the state, end quote. The search for the students suspected in the fatal shooting on North Campus has ended. Andrew Robert Murick turned himself in to police on January 24th, eight days after the shooting. A visitor to Murick's home on the 1500 block of Jones Drive near Plymouth Road was fatally shot. Murick was arrested for misdemeanor charges of possession of marijuana and an outstanding bench warrant. He was later released on bond. Anyone with information about the shooting should contact the U of M Department of Public Safety. In what is sure to induce controversy, the university announced that a recent study concluded that there should be heavier restrictions on teenage driving. The University of Michigan Transportation Research Institution stated current measures being taken to de decrease teen car crashes were ineffective, as there has been little decline in teenage car crash rates over the past 15 years. By analyzing data on teen drivers and studying psych psychological and behavior patterns, researchers found teens to be two and a half times as likely as adults to be involved in a crash. Factors that up the likelihood include having other teens in the car, as well as night and weekend driving. And turning now to news here in Ann Arbor. A woman was killed on I-94, and a 23-year-old EMT who had stopped to help at the crash scene Saturday morning was struck and killed by a vehicle. Shannon, we need to go to package. Right. Sorry. And we have a special report tonight about what you can do to combat that flu. With temperatures below no, freezing no. and snow you piling up around campus, Wolf went out and asked students if they were feeling we'll under the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, my friend Lexi is sick and she's drinking a lot of tea and airborne. I know some people have already had the flu. I personally got a flu shot, um, but somehow I've had like this little cold. According to U of M Health Services, colds can last from 4 to 14 days and flu symptoms may linger for three weeks. What have students been doing to keep from getting sick? The best thing is uh, keeping the scarf on because uh, covering up that throat is probably uh, one of the key things to stay, uh, get, uh, staying away from a cold. So. That's probably one of the best things. Well, for me, rest and chicken noodle soup. The traditional stuff is, is probably 
is probably what I would recommend. But, you know, I'd say an ounce of prevention, pound of cure. So take care of yourself, and hopefully that won't become a problem. Taking a multivitamin every morning and trying to get seven hours of sleep a night. I exercise uh, almost every day, just about. Um, and But the key is, like, I kind of wait a little bit afterwards because, you know, sweating, and then you don't want to walk out in the cold right afterwards. And I'm also wearing a whole bunch of layers, so that's kind of helping out. Um, I've really just been trying to eat a lot healthier this winter. Went to go to Myers and like get stuff for fruit salads, and me and my roommate like eat breakfast every morning. We have a little toaster in our room, so it's been working. Students have no time to be sick. Experts say that 200 viruses can cause the common cold, and the infection spreads through sneezing, coughing, or personal contact. Have students been worried about catching something from other students? I hate it when people don't wash their hands coming out of the bathroom. That's the one that gets me. The sneezing, I can deal with that. It scares me because I just got over a cold. I don't want to get sick again. I had a sore throat. I'm not trying to deal with that again. Stay tuned next week when we talk to a doctor over at UHS to see what they have to say about students staying healthy. I'm Lessa Dickinson for Wolf Television. Thank you for that report, and we're sorry for the technical difficulties before that. But rather than waiting for your health update until next week, we have a special report from our own Katie Woods, who spoke with a UHS doctor also about the flu. So, Katie, what can you tell us? So, how is it transmitted? How, how does one get the flu? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the flu is a virus, and like cold viruses, it can be transmitted by germs on your hands going to your mouth or your nose or your eyes, or it can be transmitted by somebody coughing near you with it. One of the interesting things about flu is that it's very contagious from person to person, and if I had the flu and felt fine right now because I didn't know it, I could give it to you even though I didn't know I was sick, because people are contagious for a day or two before they become aware of feeling ill. Normally, in the United States, flu season begins usually in November, December, or January, February. And we try and get all the flu shots in during October and November because they reduce the chance of getting flu by as much as 70%. But when we're having a flu outbreak, our normal volume per day goes up from maybe 250 visits to up to 350 or 400 in a day. So it's pretty significant. Now last year we had a very light flu season and uh, we just saw a, s a small number of flu cases, not many at all. So is this a concern that students <coughs> in Ann Arbor Local should really be looking into? Well, I think there are a couple reasons to get a flu shot. One is that if you do get influenza, not a common cold but influenza, you're usually out for 10 days. It's a really unpleasant illness for the healthy person where you have muscle aches and severe cough, terrible headache, 102 fever, and you're usually sick for seven to 10 days. If you have asthma or heart disease or diabetes, then you have a higher chance of ending up in the hospital with a pneumonia and there's a higher death rate. Uh, most people don't realize, but every flu season, about 35,000 Americans die really? from flu and its complications. And the deaths are more common in the very young and the elderly. And every year we read about some people, sometimes young people, who die from influenza A. Um, but we haven't had any uh, at the university that I'm aware of. For, for people who are ill, uh, washing their hands, covering their cough, uh, are important things that we think can reduce the contagiousness of flu. Let's face it, none of us wants to get that icky bug, but hopefully you learned a little bit of how to keep yourself safe and your family. Reporting for Wolf TV, I'm Katie Woods. Thank you for that report, Katie. And Kelly, I forgot to mention that uh, you might have noticed that was shot earlier in the year and more towards mm -hmm. the fall, but certainly still a prevalent issue now that we should all be concerned with. I mean, have you gotten the flu years past or anytime recently have any friends? I did. I actually had it over Christmas break. Oh my gosh. That's really unfortunate. At least you're here. And I mean, I know right. that doctor mentioned at least in the 30,000s of people dying that we just don't realize. So people should really take caution. Uh, now let's turn to your local news here in Ann Arbor. Kelly? A woman was killed on I-94, and a 23-year-old EMT who had stopped to help at the crash scene Saturday morning was struck and killed by a vehicle that police, sa police said was traveling too fast for the slick road conditions. Cheryl Kiefer of Brooklyn was unconscious during the 25 to 30 minutes it took officials to reach the scene. 
from the wreckage on eastbound I-94 at Combeck Road after the 6 a.m. crash. She was declared dead at the University of Michigan Medical Center at about 8.50 a.m. Although a Washtenaw County Road Commission official said the road had been salted minutes before the crash, police said it was extremely slick when the crash occurred. If you're looking for a downtown hotel in Ann Arbor, you'll have to find another place to stay. On Tuesday night, Ann Arbor City Council rejected plans for a new downtown hotel on Division Street. It was a business dream, but a neighbor's nightmare. A nine-story hotel at the corner of Division and Washington Streets, the hotel construction was a part of McKinley's plans to add some flavor to the downtown area. But the plans fell short after residents stepped forward with concerns of whether the new hotel would overshadow historic buildings. Others asked whether another downtown hotel was needed and ultimately the council answered with a 10 to 1 vote rejecting the plan. The best library in America is not in New York or Chicago but Chelsea, Michigan. That's right, the Chelsea District Library was named the best library in America by the American Library Journal. Along with the honor, the library also received a $15,000 prize. This is the fourth year the award has been given. Chelsea Mayor Pro Tem Jason Lindar called the library, quote, the centerpiece of the downtown, end quote. The city of Ann Arbor won an arbitration case that has been going on for eight years. The case is rooted in a disagreement between the city and its largest union and deals with the schedule of the city's payments of wage step increases to 278 union workers. The judgment is estimated to save the city $400,000. The union may appeal this ruling. Now we have Cara in the studio to give you a preview of your update of your weather for the week and to see if you need to keep those umbrellas up. Cara? Thanks, Kelly. Currently outside right now, it's 36 degrees. For the most part, it's pretty overcast and there's some light rain going on. We have winds coming out of the south at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Stick around to see if more wet weather is coming in the rest of the week. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks for that weather update and stay tuned because after the break we have the latest update on the President's final State of the Union address. It's a sad, it's a sad, sad situation and it's getting more. I want to love ya, yeah, every day and every night will be tearing up my heart when I'm with you. And when we are apart, I feel it too. And I've got to be free. We all just want to be big rock stars and live in hilltop houses, driving 15 cars. The girls come easy and the drugs come cheap. And we all stay skinny because we just won't eat. Hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. Hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. Welcome back to Newsfeed. Thanks for staying with us. Turning gears now to your national spotlight. President Bush delivered his last State of the Union address tonight. The president started off by announcing, quote, unprecedented changes over earmarking taxpayer dollars. According to White House spokesman Tony Fratto, Bush is expected to sign an executive order tomorrow, quote, directing agencies to ignore any future earmarks included in report language, but not in the legislation, end quote. Most of Bush's speech addressed issues he has already asked Congress to pass. These issues include an overhaul of federal laws governing electronic surveillance, permanent, permanent extensions of his 2004 and 2003 tax cuts, and free trade agreements with South Korea, Colombia, and Panama. The theme of tonight's address was trust and, and empower. Bush encouraged his fellow Americans to make good decisions and to hold on to their hard-earned money. In regard to the war in Iraq, Bush encouraged patience. He did not disclose when more troops would be expected home. Quote, it's going to be difficult choosing, end quote, said Massachusetts Democratic Senator Ted Kennedy back in October. Quote, I've got a lot of friends who want to be president, end quote. In this close ra presidential race, the Democratic candidates have been extremely competitive for Ted Kennedy's endorsement. Besides being a high-status liberal political figure, Kennedy would also provide a large national fundraising and political network. But it seems he's finally chosen. In an announcement made today, Kennedy formally announced he will be supporting Illinois Senator Barack Obama in the campaign race. 
Also supporting Obama is Kennedy's niece, Caroline, who told the New York Times that Obama would inspire America, Americans in the same way that her father, President Kennedy, did. Taking a different opinion is former Maryland Lieutenant Governor Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, another of the Senator Kennedy's nieces, who issued a statement Sunday confirming she would support Obama's rival, Hillary Clinton, for president. The longest serving president of the Mormon Church, Gordon B. Hinckley, passed away at 97 years old. He led the church during one of the greatest periods of its expansion. Hinckley was the 15th president of the Church of Latter day Saints. Fellow Mormon Senator Orrin Hatch said, quote, His life was a true testament of service, and he had an abiding love for others. His wit, wisdom, and exemplary leadership will be missed by not only members of our faith, but by people of all faiths throughout the world, end quote. Hinckley had been diagnosed with diabetes and was hospitalized with a cancerous growth in his intestine in January of 2008. And now we have Kara in the studio with your weather update. Kara, do we need to keep that umbrella out all week? Thanks, Kelly. Like I said earlier, currently outside right now we have 36 degrees. The skies are slightly overcast and we're experiencing some light rain. We have winds coming on the south at 15 to, 25, 15 to 25 miles per hour, and we have around 79% humidity. Taking a look at what we saw today, we can see that the high for today was 41 degrees, and we had a low of 15 degrees. Now this is right around the normal temperatures expected for this time of year, which are 31 and 17 degrees. The records were set in 2002, with a record high of 57 degrees, and a record low was set in 1977 at negative 8 degrees. Now taking a look at what's going across the United States, we can see that there's a lot of low pressure systems moving around the western half of the United States, bringing some snow systems to the Rockies and up into Washington and Oregon. And then over in the eastern half of the United States, we can see that there's a huge band of rain just coming across um, Milwaukee and Wisconsin and into the Great Lakes area. And then taking a look closer to the Great Lakes area, we can see that most of the eastern half of Michigan is covered by rain right now. Now, as you saw earlier, this rain that is in Wisconsin and Minnesota is probably going to push through through the rest of the evening to the east. So we'll be having rain throughout the rest of the evening and probably into the early morning of tomorrow. So for tonight, the forecast is 35 degrees and we'll be having some light rain in the area and winds coming from the south at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Uh, for tomorrow, we should see temperatures in the upper 40s, uh, excuse me, in the lower 40s uh, with some light rain showers throughout the day. And we'll also have winds coming from the south again at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then taking a look at the rest of the week, we can see that on Tuesday we're going to have a high of 41 and a low of 19 with some snow showers. On Wednesday we're going to have a high of 19 and a low of 16 with some flurries. On Thursday we're going to have a high of 28 and a low of 24 degrees and it's going to be mostly cali for today. On Thursday, we're going to have a high of 32 degrees with a low of 23 degrees, and we're going to have a rain and snow mix for that day. And on Friday, we should have a high, oh, excuse me, on Saturday, we should have a high of 31 degrees and a low of 21 degrees, and it should be partly cloudy. That's all the weather for now. Back to you, Shannon. Well, at least Kara is telling us that we're getting into the double digits. That's nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, opposed to last week's singles. I don't even know how, how to handle that. I know. The wind chill was horrible, too. I know. I felt like I couldn't really feel my face on the way to class. <laughs> like instant frostbite, you know, when you walk outside, it's the worst feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, the rain was nearly kind of refreshing opposed to, you know, piles of snow. Right. People sometimes like the snow, though. Or my outside, rosy planet. cheeks. That the rosy <laughs> cheeks. I know. It's an epidemic around campus in Michigan when, when you... When, get this weather. Okay. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with your sports and entertainment news, so stay tuned. Houston, we have a problem. What? I missed Grey's Anatomy last week, and now I'm going to be so behind. Um, still missing the problem here. What do you mean? We're talking about Grey's here, the most watched television show. Okay, well, I get that, but what I don't get is why you don't just watch the entertainment buzz on Wolf TV. They have recaps of all of today's most popular television shows, plus you can get previews of upcoming movies and find out what's hot in Hollywood. I mean, there's no reason not to watch. That show's the coolest. They interview The Rock on that show. That's awesome. I'm gonna go catch the spit. Man, guys, I wonder who this week's short shot's gonna be. We're gonna go watch the entertainment buzz right now. I'm with them. Gotta go catch Grace. I guess everyone's going to catch the entertainment buzz only on Wolf TV.
welcome back to Newsfeed. Now we have Lauren Smith in the studio with us tonight to tell you all about the latest on our Wolverines. Lauren? Thanks, Shannon and Kelly, and now for your Michigan sports. The men's basketball team suffered a 77-62 loss at Michigan State this Sunday. The team got off to a slow start as Michigan missed its first seven shots and two free throws. Good three-point shooting kept the Wolverines alive in the first half, but poor shot selection kept Michigan trailing by double digits all through the second. The Michigan men's basketball team is still looking for its first win in East Lansing since 1997. And further news about men's basketball team, they will be joined by the University of Michigan Athletic Department in celebrating the 40th anniversary of Chrysler Arena this Thursday. The Wolverines are scheduled to take on Minnesota at 7 p.m. As part of the celebration, the university will welcome back U of M legends Kazi Russell and Rudy Tomjanovic and members of the 1967-68 basketball team. Exciting news for Wolverine baseball fans. U of M's baseball team will begin the 2008 season ranked 8th in the country by the ba Baseball American Poll released last week. This is an 11-spot jump from their number 19 slot kicking off the 2007 season. Michigan is the only team representing the Big Ten in the top 25 rankings. Tournaments coming up include the Coca-Cola Classic Tournament in Arizona against the number 9 ranked Arizona State on February 28th and March 1st before taking on number 24 ranked East Carolina in the Keith LeClaire Tournament on Saturday, March 8th. And lastly, an exciting weekend for Mies and Blues women's gymnastics team, ranked number six. U of M piled the highest score since the 2006 season, ranked, falling, <laughs> ranked, <laughs> Sorry, impression. Kelly Bonnerman kicked off the meet, scoring a near perfect 9.925 on vault. And Kelsey Nutson met that score later on the night with another 9.925 on the balance beam. Both earned their first collegiate individual event titles. The Wolverines dominated the floor events, taking taking place on five of the top six spots. The women's gymnastics team heads to Ypsilanti for the State of Michigan Classic this Saturday. The event will also be featuring MSU, as well as teams from Eastern Central and Western Michigan. <laughs> that, and that concludes our sports news. Back to you, Shannon and Kelly. Thanks, Lauren. And stay tuned, because coming up after the break, we have your latest entertainment news with Chelsea Fuchs. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning back in, and now we have Chelsea Fuchs with your latest entertainment news. Chelsea? Thanks, Shannon and Kelly. Hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea Fuchs here with your latest entertainment news and celebrity gossip. Our thoughts go out to the family and friends of actor Heath Ledger. The 28-year-old Brokeback Mountain star and father of two-year-old Matilda was found dead by his massage therapist in his Manhattan apartment on Tuesday. The cause of his death is still being determined, but authorities believe an accidental overdose of prescription sleeping pills might have been the cause. A private memorial service was held for the actor in Los Angeles. Among those in attendance were Ledger's ex-girlfriend Naomi Watts. It is still unclear whether or not ex-fiancé and mother of Ledger's daughter, Michelle Williams, was there. Williams and Matilda will, will join the Ledger family for funeral services. Ledger is expected to be buried in his hometown of Perth, Australia. The 2008 Sundance Film Festival is underway, but sales are slower than usual. Even famed director Robert Redford's indie films have been struggling. Focus Features purchased the rights to his film Hamlet 2, starring British comic Steve Coogan for $10 million. But other than that, sales have been lacking. Heath Ledger's unexpected death and the ongoing writer's strike could be factors in the disappointment of this year's film festival. 
And make sure you look out for the pictures that were picked up by the film execs. They include Clark Gregg's comedy drama, drama Choke, the dramedy Henry Poole starring Luke Wilson and Radha Mitchell, and Frozen River by newcomer Courtney Hunt. Some indies are also expected to be picked up, and many documentaries are close to sealing deals with Tinseltown execs. Another tragic death has struck Hollywood. Marlon Brando's eldest son, Christian, was pronounced dead on Saturday. The 49-year-old was hospitalized for pneumonia on January 11th. He was in a coma and on a ventilator when he died. Brando was convicted of manslaughter for killing his sister's boyfriend in 1990 and spent five years in prison. He was later accused of playing a role in the 2001 death of Robert Blake's wife. Brando was also charged with spousal abuse and pleaded guilty to two counts of battery. Plans for a funeral have not yet been disclosed. In happier news, Wonder Years star Fred Savage and his wife Jennifer Stone are expecting their second child. The couple wed in August 2004 and have a son, Oliver. Savage and Stone do not know the sex of the baby. Nicole Ritchie and boyfriend Joel Madden made their first public outing on Friday since welcoming daughter Harlow two weeks ago. The couple met up with new grandfather Lionel Ritchie at a birthday celebration for his manager Benny Medina in L.A. Ritchie was wearing a black hip-hugging hip dress and appears to have lost much of the baby weight. And now let's take a look at this weekend's box office. Meet the Spartans, the comedy featuring heiress Paris Hilton, grossed in just over $18 million. The thriller Rambo, starring Sylvester Stallone, followed close behind. And 27 Dresses, the comedy starring Katherine Heigl and James Marsden, came in at number three. That's all the entertainment news I have for you tonight. Make sure to tune in next week for more Hollywood gossip. Back to you, Shannon and Kelly. Thanks, Chelsea, for that report. You know, I think this whole Heath Ledger thing is just really sad. I mean, yeah. a, he a wonderful actor, really a looking man, family man. I mean, he had it really all going for him, and so young too. Twenty eight years old. I know. I know. Um, it was horrible. He, well, okay. I, I think we'll have a little bit more discussion after we take a short break right now. So please stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. Sorry for that interruption. All right, so back to Heath. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, I his movies are bar none some of my favorites, such as I know you'll agree with me. Ten things I hate about you. Oh, How about I ten it, things course. I love about you, Heath Ledger? <laughs> I can name them right now. Are you kidding? Aww. Oh my gosh! I mean, a Knight's too, Tale. A Knight's Tale, perfect. I mean, somebody. And dare I throw it out there? Brokeback Mountain. It was a masterpiece. Mm. I mean, let's be honest. Tons of awards. Academy Award. Definitely. Winning movie. I, I know. Yeah. Academy Awards. He had it all going. All, all right. He will be missed. All right. And for all of us at Wolf TV, I'm Shannon Kantner. I'm Kelly Smock. Make sure you tune in for an all-new news feed tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Thanks for tuning in.